No. All right. Let's solve this puzzle. Uh oh, I set up the timer incorrectly. It's supposed to be twenty minutes, not twenty seconds. Okay. All right. Let's go. It's white to play. What should I do? So when I'm solving chess puzzle, usually I write down uh, the moves, my answers, and uh, on whatever, whatever chess position that I'm solving. And so I can compare it to what what is uh, what the, the chess author recorded on their book. This is why they play. What can you say about White's position? So White has more space advantage on the queen side. And because of this c4 pawn controls this d5 and b5 also I think white's bishop is better placed than black's bishop on g4 because it controls a lot of diagonal and from what I'm seeing here I think bishop takes c6 is also possible White has the uh, chance of sacrificing a bishop uh, <clears throat> on c6 in exchange of maybe knight takes a7 in, in exchange of three pawns, so that's possible. I mean, Black's bishop is not super active. It's attacking this e2 pawn, which is adequately defended by the knights on d4 and c3. So, I mean, if I, oh, I'm white here, I would try to break up, open the b file with rook b1, b4, b5. That's, that's one of my ideas. So if it was Black's move, what w what will what would you do if you're playing as Black? 
I mean, I can kick the knight out first here because the knight on d4 is too powerful. I play e5 and dislodge the knight. And black's, uh, white's knight will be nicely placed on f6. Is that the best square? Knight's, black's knight on g8 could be placed on f6. Let's move it. Remember just reading this this book by Jacob Augard, Positional Play. It's part of the Grandmaster series. They're talking, he's, um, he presented three questions that you're supposed to ask whatever the position is. And those questions are, what are your opponent's weakness? What are What is your opponent's worst piece? And what is your opponent's plan? So what are the weaknesses? What is your opponent's what is your opponent's worst piece and what is your opponent's plan? If you can if you can answer those questions according to Grandmaster Jacob Augard and uh, it will help you be able to figure out you know what's what what you're supposed to do. Okay, so we can try answering those questions. Um, what is your opponent's weaknesses? In G7 is uh is undefended but there's no way that I can attack it with one piece. I mean, aside from going suicide, like bishop here, giving up your bishop, terrible. Another pawn that are, that is in undefended is black's pawn on a7. There's no way that I can attack that one, aside from like here, but pawn takes knight, so it's horrible move too. <clears throat> So black doesn't have a lot of weaknesses. What about white? What are white's undefended pieces? I mean this c4 pawn. And black can attack it with here, knight e5. Then white can just defend it with b3. So, so if you can defend, if your opponent or you can defend a, an undefended piece or pawn easily, usually it's not a weakness. So what are the weaknesses? What is your opponent's worst piece? I think my opponent's worst piece is this one. G8, because it wants to go either here or there. If I have the time, I would um, get rid of this bishop, like G4. Then I would play E4, maybe F4, then E5, just to to make this knight, uh, to prevent the knight from, from jumping on, on G8. That's what I would do. If, and that's, Problem is white. I mean, I have to do a lot of moves in order to do do that. So, and what is your opponent's plan? I think my opponent's plan is to play e5, kick the knight out here on d4, then move the knight, or even play f5 if uh, if it's possible to gain more space, to control more squares on the center and the king side. So he would play f5. If I were black, I would I might I might play e5, not f5. see now maybe I have um, thinking about this bishop takes c6 the idea is to take the pawn after pawn takes bishop knight takes pawn and attacking this rook and the knight on the pawn on a7 and if for example if the rook goes here I think I can do rook takes d7 the idea is after king takes d7 the knight e5 that's a fork attacking the bishop and the king on d7 uh, that's an idea.
Sí. Maybe after bishop takes c6, b takes c6, knight takes c6, then instead of uh, instead of moving the rook to e8, then bishop c5 to protect the the uh, pawn in a7. What about oh there's also a knight e5 oh no 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 it's fine I'm hallucinating so knight takes d8 king takes d8 nothing I, I think i can oh i can also play b4 yeah b4 b4 here trying to take the bishop and bishop has to go if the bishop retreats on b6 then i can play c5 wow i mean white has a very strong attack it looks looks nice looks nice um, for white and it's, it's quite difficult for black to defend this pawn this position after bishop takes c6 mm -hmm. about bishop move to h5 or something or even h after bishop takes c6 b takes c6 then maybe move the bishop to h5 or even h5 Yeah, so because if the bishop is here on g4, then white has that sacrifice if the rook moves. So I think it's better to move the bishop um, out of the harm's way. So maybe after bishop h5, knight takes d8, and bishop takes d8. If king takes d8, then um, then it just pins. So after here, and bishop takes. So I was able to get 
two pawns and a rook two pawns for for a rook and black got a knight and a bishop so there's a trade-off of sacrificing a piece on c6 but who's better sure I'm not sure it's better after if I take the rook right away Oh, maybe I don't have to take the rook. Maybe I can play bishop f4. Good idea of... And knight takes a7. It's just to prevent black from... Bishop F4 is interesting. Okay, how many more minutes do we have? Okay, two minutes and 50 seconds. Ah, okay. After bishop f4. So, here, here. Then bishop goes to h5, then bishop here. Can, I think black can go here. Um, oh, oh, that's the idea. Black cannot go here. Because otherwise, the knight takes a7, forcing the king to go to either d8 or b7. If the king goes to b7, then rook takes d7. That's the idea. But if the king goes to d8, then what now? The knight c6, then king c8, then knight b5. Okay, it looks nice. Yeah, I think that's the correct answer. Bishop takes c6. B takes c6, the knight takes c6. I'm gonna write down my moves. All right, let's look at the answer. Okay, let's assess this one. Code different numbers of pieces, material imbalances, and imbalances is, is the, the difference between whites and blacks position. So according to the author, Grandmaster, Axel Smith, material imbalances where one of the players has more pieces than his opponent are special cases with two minor pieces against a rook and two rooks or three minor pieces against a queen. The player with more pieces has a static advantage. If static means uh, it's more of uh, long term or permanent, 
If he manages to get good outpost for the pieces, he will usually control the position. What the player with a single piece wants to do is create dynamic play, like attack. This is important to remember and a recurring theme. In the following examples, the pawns are the most common tool in creating dynamic play. Either playing for pass pawns or first attacking weak pawn in the opponent's camp. The pawn structure is thus that of the pawn structure is thus of utmost importance in all these positions. The Swedish Grandmaster Tom Wedberg has pointed out that there is an advantage in having only one piece. Your full pawns can move in only one move. Hmm. If you have uh, only a piece. If three pieces are badly coordinated, it, it can take several moves to arrange them. But a single queen cannot have a bad coordination because it can move to many squares at the same time in, in one move. I will return to this object in the upcoming examples to minor pieces versus rook. The, the player with a rook against two minor pieces often has one or two pawns as compensation. However, as pointed out by Silas Lund, in his great book, Rook versus Two Minor Pieces, dynamic factors are much more important than, num than the number of pawns. As mentioned in the previous section, the player with the rook needs to create dynamic play, often with the pawns, okay? The player with the rook should also try to exchange pieces for many different reasons. It becomes easier to create pass pawns. The most common kind of dynamic... What is this? Play, dynamic play. There are more more often files. There are more more open files for the rook. It becomes difficult for the minor pieces to defend all the entry squares and also the pawns. As mentioned in the code from Wedberg, the two pieces are slower to move. That is more that is more important the fewer pieces there are on the board, since each piece must cover bigger part of the board. In the following game, there is one variation with the rook, with a position that illustrates the kind of play that suits. The rook and code. Okay, so white played bishop takes c6. This is a game between uh, Arjen Tari and John Ludwig Hammer in played in Oslo, Norway, year 2012. So Tari is playing white. He played bishop takes c6, knight b6. So if black takes here, what's going to happen? Then knight takes c6. Then he has two ways to continue: rook f8, a6. Then knight takes d8, bishop takes d8. Okay. A position with two minor pieces against a rook has risen. The first thing to look for in such positions is whether the player with the two minor pieces has outposts. In this position, black does not have any outposts and will not be able to coordinate his minor pieces against one target. So black doesn't have good outposts for, let's say, a knight or a bishop. Okay. The second thing to look for is whether the pawns can create dynamic play. They can. If white advances queenside pawns, let's say here, a3, b4, or b4 right away, then b5, try to create pass pawns. If, if white advances queenside pawns, he will get two connected pass pawns. It's true. White is slightly better. His only risk is that he will weaken squares when he advances on the queenside. Also, he has, to be, he has to be careful. The game continuation keeps the balance equal, but white gets a strong initiative. I will give the next few moves. So, what happened here? Okay. So, knight takes c6. Uh, maybe rook f8. The knight takes a7. Then bishop e3. Then maybe c4 now. Ah, okay, so he got three. White got three pawns for the bishop. Knight check. Plus, look at black pieces. They're cramp. They are cramp on the king side. And that doesn't look good. Because right now, if you, if you, if you, as you can see, white can just start um, bombarding the pawn, um, pushing the pawn, and get a queen. Yeah. So king e8. Uh, a4, the pawn is un unstoppable, white wins, end code. All right, well, okay, so I'm just wondering after... What if, after bishop takes e6, what if uh, b takes e6, then knight takes e6, then here? 
I'm just gonna turn on the uh, stockfish for a few time. Okay, bishop f4 is the correct move. I'm correct. Oh no, bishop e3 now. Now it's knight b5. All right. Oh, that's interesting. Knight b5. In here. But now it's bishop f4. Okay, so I still got the correct move, bishop f4. The idea is if we go here, then knight takes here. Then I, I thought I can go back to um, c6. So black, white has this nastier move, threatening to checkmate black, the black king in one move. Okay. Wow, that is awesome. That is awesome. Okay. Okay, let's go back. Instead of taking the knight, hammer, John Ludwig hammer, did play knight v6. Okay, bishop g2, knight takes c4. b3, bishop here. Now what, e3? Oh, takes. Bishop takes, oh, rook takes, rook takes, bishop takes, then bishop d2, defending the knight. Knight b knight e7. Okay. Just keep on pressing the moves. Okay, so instead of bishop f6, what if black plays knight b6? Bishop e3. Black's coat, black's queen side will collapse when white plays knight d to b5 next move. Yeah, it's a very powerful threat. Also, black's king's position is dangerously placed. Uh, why does this tempo gaining move? Uh, rook a to c1, threatening to move the knight. And uh, this knight looking. And look at white's bishops. It's facing black's queen side pawns, threatening to uh, do something uh, like dangerous against black. So looks very good for white here. Okay, so instead of knight b6 hammer played bishop f6 and so Tari made a mistake b takes c4 is supposed to do what knight c to b5 what is the idea to take the pawn knight now has to move if bishop takes d4 then rook takes d4 rook takes d4 knight takes d4 then bishop f4 okay with the idea of rook c1 all right So instead of bishop takes d4, what about bishop takes it e2? Bishop taking the pawn. Now what? Maybe a rook d1. Bishop takes d4. Knight takes a7. King b8. Then bishop f4. Then, wow, I don't know. Now black has e5, so we gotta calculate before moving too fast e5 knight d to c6 b takes c6 knight takes c6 a lot of pieces are hanging like my rook is under attack my bishop my knight on d4 is under attack and even my king and my knight on a7 is under attack so a lot of pieces are under attack in fairness black's bishop on e2 is under attack too it's undefended, but Black's bishop might take White's rook on on a1. Uh, I don't know. After e5, what happens after e5? Okay, takes here. Knight b5. Rook takes. Then b takes c4. Ah, uh, okay. Black cannot defend the queen side. Maybe. Maybe after here, he, black has uh, white has this one, fork, threatening to take the bishop and take the pawn on f7, then take the uh, rook on h8. Okay, wow, that's um pretty excellent move, knight c to b5. So knight c, b, c to b5 is the correct correct move, but gotta figure out 
and uh, spend more time calculating these variations. In the game, Tari played B takes C4, which is a mistake. After Rook takes D4, Black is back in the game, and the rest of the moves are another story, unquote. And, but Tari was still able to win this game. Let's just finish the, the game, what happened. Okay, double pawn, C5, creating an outpost for White Knight on D6. Okay, ah, yeah, White White is also attacking the pawn on A7. Then back, then, then now, it's a beautiful outpost. <clears throat> she takes, takes, then push pawn. Takes. Also, Tari decided to create uh, I mean, Arantari already has this C pawn, but he still decided to create another pass pawn. So black has a lot of uh, pawns to worry about. Well, the last white's last move is beautiful because here white is threatening to push the pawn, but black played this prophylactic move. So the idea is, if white pushes the pawn, then black sacrifices his bishop for the pawn. But instead boom white blockaded blacks diagonal so very beautiful finish by Aryan Tari excellent maybe we can do one more one more puzzle one more chess puzzle okay this is white to move this is a game okay I don't, I don't I'm not gonna tell you the game but let's do let's try to do this faster Maybe 15 minutes instead of instead of the usual 20 minutes. Why to play? can we say about white's position this position so white has two four six three six that's eight pawns no no nine pawns oh eight pawns eight pawns for for black and white has six pawns so black got a, uh, a rook and two pawns for for a knight and bishop. But black, but white has more space advantage. White also has this threat, check first then trap the rook or something, attack the rook. should I do so 
So, according from from according to Grandmaster Axel Smith from the first example, if you have the white and a bishop, if you have the minor pieces like the knights and a bishop, you need to have outpost in order to be better than your opponent because usually the side who has the rook plus two pawns are better in the end game if they can create like pass pawns but here black's rook are less effective because it doesn't have good files so preferably white is better here because it's closed the position doesn't have enough files for black's rook <clears throat> I don't know, queen d4 or queen a1. I, I, I like queen d4 check. So I'm trying, for me as white too, I want to, I will try to prevent black from expanding its its pawns too far. Like d, after, if I like, for example, I move my knight back, then black might play d5. I'm kicking my knight here on c4. But as much as possible, I want to push this pawn for white just to prevent discourage black from playing d5. So, but I cannot play e4 right now because otherwise pawns are gonna take the knight. Queen d4, check. Then f6. Then if queen a7, then bishop d7. It's just it's gonna useless to go to a7. So after f6, I can play knight c3. Hmm. Now my idea is to play e4 soon. After d5, then maybe I can play rook d1. Then if queen e7, then maybe knight c3. Okay, uh, at least I have a tempo for queen d4 check. If queen d4 checked in e5, then I can just go to c3. Yeah. If c6, then knight. Oh, I cannot go. Oh, I can go knight here. Knight d to, to b6. I can just go c3. Then if play c6, then knight, yeah, knight, knight d to c, knight d to b6. And if for example, a, yeah, black cannot play d5 because I'm gonna take the uh, the pawn. Oh yeah, it's check. Followed by capture on b8. So queen 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 d7 uh, queen d4 check for white is looking good now. It's a tempo. After queen d4, I think black's best move to play f6. Then then white can play knight c3. 
then if it's c6 then oh if for example d5 then knight a5 and if c6 then maybe a4 or even e4 See, six minutes to go. D5 then root D1. So queen d4, then for example f6, then knight to c3, if d5 then rook d1, if queen e7, then maybe knight a5, but looks bad to put my knight on e5. So anyway, black cannot move the pawn to b6 because then the pawn Oh, yeah, because of ninety six. Okay. 
so my idea is for why to just to put my pieces on the, their best square and hopefully black would be willing to create weaknesses like weak squares where I can put my knight and create an outpost that's what I want to do for white for black is you you want if I'm playing as black I would try to open up the file for my rooks and try to exchange the queen so I can create connected pass pawns that's the plan but here uh, I think white can try to force black to create some weaknesses and outposts for white pieces. Okay, let's look at the, uh, the example, the solution. All right, so this is a game between Nils Grandelius, Swed Swedish grandmaster, and Alexander Ipatov. Uh, from Turkey and former World Junior Champion from uh, the World Junior Championship in Athens, Greece in year 2012. So here is why to play why played Queen D4. Okay, let's see what Grandmaster Axel Smith wrote down. Quote, the exchanging operation seen in the previous, previous moves can happen in, in various positions in the King's Indian. White gets two knights for a rook and two pawns. Oh yes, two knights, okay. The pawn position does not suit the rooks. There are no open files. At the same time, it does not suit the minor pieces either since there are no outposts and no attack on the king. What black needs to do is keep a dynamic pawn center and, and advance with d5 and e5, okay, without creating any weak squares. Because if there are weak squares, then white can exploit it and create an outpost ideally he will manage the to create the created pass pawns in the both and c files this one black is hoping to push the d and c pawns and create an and create connected pass pawns Ulf anderson's intuition says that white is better even though it might be difficult to play however when we analyze the position we did we did not reach clear conclusion so here, Niels Grandelius, Grandmaster from Sweden, played Queen d4. And this is my move too, it's dubious. The game move is very natural, centralizing queen. When black cannot answer with queen f6, because queen f6 is just giving up the queen for free. However, stronger might be knight to f4. Okay, white's plan e2 to e4, yes, that's my plan too, just to slow down black's pawns from moving forward. d5, if black plays e5, then go back to d5, okay, knight d5. White threatens to play e3 to e4, black's best is probably f5, but white can start to undermine the center word f4, okay, blockade. To gain more space on the king side and to prevent um, black from playing maybe f4 and also putting a pressure against black's e5 pawn on e5 so after knight f4 what about d5 kicking this knight out and c4 queen d4 check then f6 now does white does black have a threat of yeah e5 oh no I, can, I think i can play rook d1 right so the idea is if e5 then queen takes d4 oh queen a7 now and bishop d7 oh knight a5 oh. So black has two moves, b6, then maybe knight b3. Knight c6, oh, knight c6. Because if takes here, then that's a, that's a fork. Wow, b6 uh, is a blunder. Okay, what about queen c8? Maybe I can play rook c1 now. Yes, rook c1. Black center are tamed, it is not enough to claim an advantage. Okay, but still like still like white because white has a space advantage 
and white is the pressure and black is defending I mean would you rather be attacking or defending so so that's the question okay knight f4 is better according to grandmaster axel smith queen d4 check f6 the knight c3 that's what i wrote down knight c3 it would be a tra strategic mistake to block the e pawn with knight d to e3 knight d3 e3 is a mistake because it blocks this e pawn from going to e4 to prevent uh black's expansion on on the center and on the king side so f6 knight c3 d5 maybe rook d1 now knight a5 okay so grandmaster niels grandelius played knight a5 what about knight b2 is better where is this going it's better before examining the, that move i will show you the game continuation an interesting position would have appeared after this move the knight will continue to d3 where it controls both black's levers b6 black is trying to make a pawn lever or a pawn breakthrough with b6 to e5 then maybe e6 to e5 Okay, white still cannot create effective play against the blocking, but he can try to fix black spawns. B6, then A, for example, C6, then F4. Per trading to play here. Yes, F4. Now black cannot play there. Because pawn is going to get you. Then I D3. After queen E7, still black is threatening to go there, but here, now there's additional reinforcement against that important e5 square okay now e4 and takes oh here i think i have a temple yes i have a temple trying to take the rook on b8 so bishop has to go e6 now can i take the e5 e takes c takes then knight takes oh knight takes e5 okay and black's proud pawn structure has collapsed nice that is nice. Oops. Knight b2 is better. b6. Knight d3, queen d6. Black will play bishop d7 or bishop b7 followed by rook c8 to c5 to create a uh, pawn lever or breakthrough. White has one way to, find, to fight against this. It's a4. The idea is what? e4 is a mistake because takes takes ah now after white plays e4 it just helps black to have this diagonal for uh, for its bishop to challenge black's light square bishop so e4 is a positional mistake yeah takes rook here now and now black has at least one file for its rook Okay, you, you don't want to give black an open file for its rook. So queen d6, a4, c6. But the move, but the pawn move has two disadvantages. Firstly, it weakens the c5 square by no longer being able to recapture with c takes b6 because if the pawn is ready here and and black's pawn is on c6 then he cannot capture the pawn on, on b6 after white plays like let's say a5 so with the pawn on c6 secondly it leaves the queen undefended this queen is undefended too so if f4 i thought it's e4 then bishop d7 Code, he can get an advantage either e4 or a5. So if black takes, let's say here, then black cannot play c5 because I'm just gonna take it. Okay. e4 also works for white. Maybe try to need to play e5. And black cannot take the pawn because the queen hangs. So instead of c6, black can play bishop d7. Then b5 takes, takes, pawn takes, pawn, pawn takes, pawn. A bishop takes here. 
question mark maybe oh, I can play e4 okay there you go e4 then exchanges on d5 gets good outposts so queen takes c6 is the only move why what's the difference can I just play e4 right now yeah e4 the knight takes e5 I don't know rook b1 queen c4 takes takes right here b5 Quote, the final position of our analysis, the position is balance. White cannot do anything active, but he does control all, all the squares. I think the variation is a good illustration of typical play with two minor pieces. Against a rook and pawns, the player with the minor pieces tries to create outposts. Yep, white was able to create like an artificial outpost with no pawns involved. While the player with the rook tries to open files, uh, I mean, black cannot go here because bishop's gonna get you. So you cannot go here. Maybe go put your rook, the other rook here on uh, d8. He also wants his to push his pawns, but has to be careful to uh, creating weakening squares. All right. So still unclear though in this position. It's it's ba it's balanced, but. Any color has the chance, like white or black has the chance to win, to create some complications. All right, let's go to what happened in the game. Queen d4, check. d5, knight a5, mistake, c5. Queen f4. What happens? Ah, queen takes c5, then b6. Okay. Ah, and queen takes c5 here. And if takes here, then takes that. It's minus plus. Minus plus two. So after c5, white cannot touch the pawn. Queen f4. Chef d7. Maybe now queen d6. Grandel is over overlooked this move. Now he has to retreat and it's simply worse. Rook d1. Mistake. Knight b3 takes. Pawn takes. Was the lesser evil. But the position is already changed in black's favor. And now he has an open file. He has an open file for the rooks and he can create a pass pawn on the a file. Meanwhile, white has not managed to create any outposts for his minor pieces. Okay, so in the game... Rendell is played rook d1, mistake, then b6, c4, knight d2, f5. Okay, I'm gonna look at look at white. Black spawns. D5. Okay, let's just finish the game. Now white has black has this powerful pass pawns. With g4 and with h4, h5, g4. White is trying to create some complications. Otherwise, black is going to win on the end game if it doesn't do anything. Check. Takes. Here comes the pawns. Rush. Wow, so black didn't even just ignore the knight. Instead, started uh, pushing the d-pawn. Takes. Check. Okay. Okay. Okay, so maybe work takes here, then here. Work takes it's winning. Okay. So if you guys um learned something today, it's um great experience. Uh it's a lesson about what we're supposed to do in terms of um like any even exchanges, like two minor pieces for for a rook. Remember if you have the two minor pieces you want to get outpost, if you have the rook you want to get open files. All right, so hopefully I'll see you guys on the next show. Bye.